Hi guys, welcome back to Fit Life SD TV, where we're bringing you the science of nutrition and fitness. And today in Coach's Corner, we're gonna be continuing on our diet practices, making sure our diet matches our nutrition. We went over the three diet types that we like to use here at Fit Life. Today we're gonna to be focusing on one. We're gonna let you know all about it. So guys, last week we dealt with a bulking diet, a recomp diet, and a cutting diet, and we gave a little bit of generalities on how they're different. Today we're gonna hone in on one specifically. Going forward, we're gonna try to break down the other ones as well, but today we're looking at the bulking diet. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. We just got a few things to kind of keep in mind because you always have a base on any diet you're gonna look at, and that's gonna be how many calories are we gonna be feeding the person and what is it for, okay? So a bulking diet is obviously performance-based. Um, this is gonna be geared towards someone who's trying to build as much muscle as possible and they're gonna be building a little bit of fat with that. So a bulking diet is not what people traditionally thought, just eat cheeseburgers, pizza, that's just not gonna work. People tried that in the past, but what ends up happening is if you just go into a bulk without a plan, without a strategy, you're gonna accumulate so much body fat. Body fat at a certain point is gonna start lowering your insulin sensitivity, which is gonna affect your nutrient partitioning. What does that mean? Your nutrient partitioning is just like if you go into an office cubicle, you have partitions, you eat some food, some of your food's gonna be partitioned to be stored as fat, some of it's gonna be partitioned to be stored in muscle and to build muscle. So what really affects this is your insulin sensitivity, how quickly your body's cells are able to absorb sugar when we have an insulin spike. And so if you just bulk to the high heavens with all the food you want, you're gonna accumulate body fat really quick. And when your insulin sensitivity is low, it almost becomes impossible to, be, to build muscle because we rely on the anabolic response of insulin to drive nutrients into the muscles. So it's really important to make sure we're not just eating whatever we want. So we're gonna get a little bit into how you actually structure that diet. All right, so we're just gonna have an example of maintenance calories. We're gonna say 2,500. For most men, that's about accurate, though we do calculate it. This is just a rough example. A woman, as a rough example, you could say 17, 1,800, depending on their activity level, size, all that stuff. Uh, so for a bulking diet, we obviously wanna have a surplus of calories, so your body's not fighting to harness calories from other stored body fat areas to try to build muscle. Yes, we can recomp, which means you would be building muscle and burning fat at the same time, but both processes are slower than the, the polar extremes. So this is the polar extreme of building muscle. Now it's good if they're at 2,500 calories to give them about 250 calorie surplus, maybe a little bit more in case your calculations are wrong. So I've written up here your surplus. If your maintenance calories are predetermined to be 2,500, then you can go as low as maybe 2,700 and build muscle or you can go as high as 3,000. So how are you gonna figure out which one? You have your client that has a pretty good body fat level to begin with. You do not wanna start someone on a bulking diet if they already have a good amount of fat. At that case, you could either put them on a cut, get them to lose weight where they're not gonna build muscle or recomp them so they could lose fat while they're building muscle slowly at the same time. So again, the more body fat you have, the harder it is gonna to be to start building muscle once that insulin sensitivity starts to wear down. So we wanna make sure they're pretty decently lean, maybe 12% body fat, 15% body fat. That's decent, and you could safely bulk someone up to maybe a 20% body fat. That's kind of, in my experience, when people's metabolic processes start to slow down, they don't build muscles quickly. So you start someone relatively lean at 2,500 calories, you bump their calories up to about 27, 2750, and you watch them over the next few weeks. You watch the scale, you watch their bodybuilding, their body composition change on their weekly check-ins, and if it looks like the scale is going up faster than it really should, and the body composition is not representing muscle gain, then you want to bring the calories down a little bit. If it seems like the scale is not really going up and they're not really building muscle, then you'll bump up the calories a little bit. So you can go start with 200. Uh, I'm sorry, start with 250 calories. Um, and the reason why I say that's a good place to start is because in exercise science, we are taught that a surplus of 250 calories really is about what it takes to rebuild muscle structures. And it's also the same amount of calories it takes to build a baby. So if a woman's pregnant and you do the research, they would show you that the, the average number of an, a calorie surplus to build a human being is 250 calories 
above maintenance and it kind of goes the same for muscle tissue. So we want to keep it uh, somewhat conservative because a bulk can be eight weeks, it could be 12 weeks, it could be 24 weeks, depending on how much muscle the person has to build. And again, we're going to, to bulk someone up to around 20% body fat. So if you get them from 15% body fat to 20% body fat in one month, that's only four weeks. You've ruined the bulk. They're not gonna build a lot more muscle because their insulin's not gonna work. So they're gonna be putting on body fat, but you wanna bring it up very slowly. What that's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to drag the bulk out longer and they're gonna be anabolic for more weeks and be able to build more mu muscle continuously. So what happens if you misjudge whether you're self-coaching or you are a coach and you have a client and somehow they put on too much body fat and the bulk is not over? This is where a lot of coaches have a fork in the road. You can either go on a diet, bring your body fat back down and then continue to bulk after that or what I like to do, and I actually just had to do it because we're getting ready to go into a contest prep. Uh, my bulking season, I just put on too much fat too quickly. I decided to just get into a recomp. So I just ate around maintenance, sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. No cheat days, because on a recomp, you have plenty of calories where you really don't need to have refeeds because you're eating around maintenance. That's what your body is used to burning. And over a two month period, I was able to drop about 10 to 15 pounds of body fat just eating consistently like that. Um, so um, my bulk got a little bit skewed because I wanted a bulk all the way because I would have built muscle more but I had to have about eight weeks of a recomp and, and build what muscle I could with that before we go into our cut and so that's one place you can go but a true strategic bulking diet is gonna be where if you say you're gonna bulk for 12 weeks you don't get above 20% body fat until the very end and then you're gonna be in a good place where your metabolism is higher so when you cut now you can cut with higher calories so if you do it wrong you're going to have less muscle mass at the end of the bulk which is going to affect your metabolism and the cut is going to be a lot harder but if you get to the end of your bulk and you somehow manage to be lean or limit the amount of body fat when you have to go into the cut to show all your hard work what you built it's you're going to drop body fat a lot quicker so the, the long story short in all this is a bulk is not what we used to think, just eat pizza, cheeseburgers. No, a bulk is just eating a little bit above your maintenance to get muscle gains. And when you plateau, you bring the calories up a little bit, like 200 calories at a time. Um, because if you do it perfectly, again, the cut is gonna be a lot simpler and you're gonna build a lot more muscle. So with that, what are we gonna say about, you can't eat cheeseburgers and you can't eat pizza what does the bulking diet actually look like? We're just looking at the calories right now, but for the most part, my suggestion where I found the most success is you eat the same way you're gonna eat during a cut or a recomp. You have more flexibility, you might have more cheat days, maybe you can get a burger in there here and there, pizza, but psychologically, you wanna eat the way you're gonna eat during a cut. So if you're eating chicken and rice all the time and you have different uh, bodybuilder type meal preps, it's better to just eat the same thing with larger portions. One, because you're gonna have less bloat. What you don't want is when you gotta get a certain amount of calories in, but the food is so dirty that it's just messing up your digestive system, that's gonna throw it out of whack. Um, the other thing is, if you need to up your calories, and say you're eating chicken and rice, and each, each container you're eating is about 400 calories, and it's not enough, you could bump up the rice by half a cup and add an extra 150 calories to each meal, and or, Add, throw a couple more ounces of chicken in there. But for the most part, it makes it easier on the psyche because when you start to cut, you don't really notice you're eating differently. You're just eating smaller portions. So for, for a bulking diet, not a traditional old school style, what most people are having success with is if they eat somewhat clean. And the word clean, I don't like to use because in nutrition science, there's really no definition of what eating clean is. So what I, my definition of eating clean is, we are gonna use as many macronutrients that are gonna be direct substrates for muscle growth. We don't wanna build fat, so in a bulk, I like to keep the fat somewhat low, okay? Maybe 35% of your total calories, everything else, you wanna have a good balance between protein and carbs, because carbs are very anabolic. I know the whole world is like anti-carb right now, they think carbs make you fat. Well, carbs will make you fat if you eat more than you can use, but if you're eating what you need to use to build muscle, and we're determining that, again, by slowly bump, bumping up the calories, one to 200 calories at a time, we're trying to make sure we're just getting enough 
carbs to fuel the muscle growth and enough protein to build the muscle. But if you're filling up this 27 to 3,000 calories with fat, everyone thinks carbs turn into fat. But what does fat turn into? Fat. So you're, you're skipping the race, putting something in your body that fat doesn't really make you anabolic. Yes, if you, um, if you don't have enough fat in your body, your hormone production is going to go down, your testosterone is going to go down. Other, there's other indirect ways that fat can be a substrate for muscle building, but for the most part, once you have enough fat in your diet, and like I say, it should be pretty, about 35%. So some people will say 35%, that's the bare minimum. You, what you got to realize is if you're bulking on a higher amount of calories. So keeping your dietary fat around 35%, um, that's good. And so what we're gonna do with our protein, some people say, well, what percentage of carbs, what percentage of protein? Well, it's pretty easy because we've only got three macronutrients we're working with. Specifically, that's gonna be your fat, your protein, and your carbohydrates. So if you're bulking, you wanna build as much muscle. Now, I say the sweet spot for protein synthesis and protein intake is usually about 0.8 grams per pound of body weight because that's going to kind of keep you over what the bare minimum recommendation is and kind of keep you away from going too high but in a bulk we really want to make sure that we're getting as much protein as we can in so that we don't accidentally undershoot so in a bulking type diet i recommend at least one gram per pound of body weight some will say that's too much some will say that's too little you do one gram per pound of body weight, you are not gonna have a problem building the maximum amount of muscle that you can. And that's what the data shows, okay? There's not a whole lot of data, oh no, there's no data that shows going above and beyond that, that you're gonna keep building more and more muscle. It just doesn't work that way. So in a bulking diet, it's good to have one gram per pound of body weight so that you know your bases are covered. As you go into a maintenance or a recom diet or even a cutting diet, sometimes you gotta pull calories from other areas. Maybe I'll go down to like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight just to give us room to cut calories from other areas. In a bulking diet, we're not gonna do that. So once you've determined how much uh, protein you need that that would equate to, you fill up the rest of your calories with carbs. And so you got your fat at 35, your protein at one gram per pound of body weight, anything that's left over, you leave that with your carbs. Now there's gonna be times where some people will say have a little bit more carbs if you're looking flat, if you need a refeed. That, that's just gonna be something different, even in a bulk where you're supposed to be refeeding all the time, there's times where you still might wanna have higher carb days just to kind of fill out. So um, we'll get more into that in another video. Um, but for bulking, pretty much we're keeping a general guideline of what we're gonna follow. So. This is pretty much, in a nutshell, or I guess, long story short, in a snapshot, a really good way to set someone up for success if they want to bulk. If you do it wrong, like I say, you're gonna fatten them up too much, and they're gonna come to the end of their bulking season with hardly any muscle build. So that's a shortened way to kind of look at how to set someone up on a bulking diet. If you have any other questions, we can go on forever, and usually in a Q&A or with a client, it seems like there's a lot of questions, and that's okay, because we have a lot of answers. But in one video, it's kind of hard to figure out what all to go into. So if you want to know more about that, please send us a, a message in the comment section. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, and we'll have more of this content coming to you soon.